everyone, and welcome to a, another another episode of the Custom Apparel Startups Podcast. This is Mark Stevenson. And this is Mark Vila. And today we're going to talk about uh, how much does it cost a 2022 t-shirt printer options buying guide of sorts? Okay. I like all that. <laughs> So um, this is kind of what uh, the the world we live in 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 marketing and um, and talking about t shirt printers with folks online, right? Yeah. We hear um, how much does it cost to start a start a t shirt printing business? Um, oh wow, that machine's way too expensive. No matter what machine <laughs> it is, no matter what machine it is, or the other way. Oh wow, it's only that much. I thought I was going to be so much more. Yeah, um, not very often. Yeah, why why would I want to buy why would I buy this printer when my Cricut can do the same thing? Right. Um, or I what's the best it. t-shirt? <laughs> what was that? Right. And and which is never true. Yeah, which is never true. Um, and what's the best t-shirt printer? You know, these are all this is the the, the things that we run into online when yeah. we're talking to folks on social media or uh, answering questions online or when people call in, they ask this stuff and it really inspired this episode that we should kind of have a one and tell all about all the different printers and what do they cost and maybe some pros and cons. Yeah. I think we're, we're, you know, cold in a unique um, position in the marketplace to do this too, because, you know, we, we get so many of these kinds of questions because um, because we sell them all, you know, because we, mm-hmm. We deal with all of the technologies, you know, direct garment printing and DTF and white toner and sublimation, you know, um, transfers and vinyl print and cut, you know, there, there's really not much that we don't do. So we've got something in every piece of the market and can really do a good job of maybe helping you walk through and fitting your application to how much you have to spend or changing how much you have to spend to fit your application. Yeah. Yeah. And and this is something that I know I've said a hundred times, maybe, or maybe not on the podcast, probably. Um, But in real life, I'd say it almost every day is that there just isn't a best way to print t-shirts. Right. Right. Just like there isn't a best car. Right. And the classic example I say is like, what do you mean? A sports car versus like a pickup truck, right? They yeah. are very, very different, very, very amazing vehicles. But if you have a roofing company, that's different than if you're um, retiring on the beach. Yeah. Two different things you want to own. So um, I think we could just start to go into some of the different technologies um, in each technology uh, that we have at Coldessi. We'll talk about what equipment we sell about how much it costs, um, a, a little bit about financing it, about how much it costs for a monthly payment, and then a little bit of a pro and con. Um, and this isn't uh, uh, every single piece of information. This is like a little snippet. Yeah. And then the one caveat we have to say is, is that the prices and technology and offering that we're talking about is what's available at the time when we wrote this podcast. Yeah. That, that, thanks for that. Because, you know, we, we kind of based this on an article, you know, we got the idea from an article that um, we did. I think Mark Vila probably did it. Um, <laughs> I don't know that, if I did. <laughs> about a survey of, you know, we did you know, best t-shirt printers for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, we noticed a couple of things as soon as we opened it up, the article was six months old. So some of the pricing in it was wrong. And um, it was just before we came out with the, um, the high volume direct to film printer. So a significant piece of technology was missing. You know, when we do these podcasts, when we write content for websites, and this goes for anybody, you know, it's really time dependent, you know, mm-hmm. and you should, you should realize that if you, you know, so for example, um, price on one of the products in the article had gone up, price on DTG printers had come down a little bit. So you should always, you know, you should always realize that when you look at an article as opposed to an e-commerce site like Coleman and Company, where you can buy supplies and machines directly online, you know, that that there's going to be some variability. So we tried to do a range in this podcast, um, which still may or may not be true by the time we listen to it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I but I feel I do feel confident that this will give you an overall picture. Yep. Of what you're looking at, it is it's a snapshot of today in the beginning of 2022 when this podcast was was done. If you're listening to this in um, in the year 2032, 
10 years from now um for one um thank you you know thank, thank you for listening. thanks for still still having that antique podcast playing device <laughs> and uh and a lot of this stuff might change you know but jokingly r- realistically i mean all year this is going to be pretty darn close i would say and and even through next year there'll be some pretty it'll be pretty darn close and there may even be some more options um that we'll have um so def so in all listen to this podcast learn some good stuff get some good questions write them down i like to talk about doing homework the best homework you could do is when you hear us talk about something or you find something interesting write it down make a note and then when it's time for you to um talk to one of the pros at coldesi Yep. Uh, then, uh, then you'll have some questions to ask and you can just say, Hey, I was listening to the podcast. They talked about this. What do you think? And, and they'll keep you informed of what's, what's up to date. Uh, yeah, so like let's that. go ahead and let's get into one. Okay. So the first one you've got down here, and this isn't necessarily all like lowest cost to highest cost. Um, but definitely getting into heat transfer vinyl, um, is the most, one of the most economical ways to start in custom apparel or customization of a lot of things. And um, if you're not familiar with it, if you've never seen um, a cutter before, as far as you know, if you think of Cricut, which is the most popular brand, um, basically all vinyl cutters do pretty much the same thing. You put a, uh, in our case, a heat transfer vinyl into a machine, you send a design to it, and the machine cuts out the, the outline of the design in the vinyl, whether it's a sheet or a roll. Right. And then after it comes out, then you use some kind of a tool or your fingers to peel it off. And you then heat press that onto a garment or onto some kind of a hard good. Does that sum it up, Mark? Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, it's like a computer controlled razor blade. They, oh, you know, I like that. It is what it is. You and just said I, what I said. Only mine took 20 minutes. And yours <laughs> took five. You're, you, you've taught me how to do that, Mark. Mm. That's, that's you. You've taught me. Good. How to do that. That's great. Uh, but yeah. And. and uh, at Coldesi, we carry uh, uh, one. One would debate the two top brands. You know the. Coke no, they, and Pepsi. they are the two. They are the two top yeah. brands of commercial business oriented. Commercial. So right. You, you mentioned the Cricket earlier, and then the Silhouette would be another. And there's other generic hobby cutters out there that you can buy at Walmart or Michaels or Joann's or, or any places like that. And and those are uh, fun and cool toys for the hobbyist, but. When you want to do something commercial, you want to step up to a commercial piece of equipment. For one, they're designed to run all day and they're significantly faster and the materials are significantly cheaper and, and it's a way to run a business. So, so I think that's, that's two things you just said is, is the um, commercial cutters are larger, so they'll hold um, wider rolls of material. And just in that, you pay less for every shirt you make. Mm-hmm. You know, because so you'll make more profit and it's significantly faster. So you can do more designs per hour, which means you're working less to produce the same amount of work. So you get three different ways to make more profit just because you're using a commercial um, heat transfer vinyl cutter versus a consumer. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, we kind of estimated a, a cost of a uh, of a cutting a cutting system uh, to start around twenty five hundred dollars. Okay, and y- y- honestly, that's that's not the low end of the price, right? Because you could probably just get a cutter for less than fifteen hundred dollars or around that delivered. But yes. we try to be realistic to say you're gonna need some vinyl. You're gonna need some papers and materials you know you may or may not need a heat press which can bump that number up a bit more but uh, around 24 2500 dollars is is a reasonable way to say you could probably get started there and you know uh so mark there's i know that you know something like the cricket is like 12 inches i believe it is Uh, okay so 12 12 inches what does what would an entry-level commercial um cutter start at you know what size? size Yeah. So, so cutters are generally going to be, um, for, if we're talking about entry level style, cause they mm-hmm. go huge, you can buy a cutter. That's like the wider as big as your house, house basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. But, but that's probably not what most businesses are going to get into. Most are going to have get into a 15 or a 20 inch cutter and that's the width. 
Um, the great thing about, about these cutters is it's not just the width, but it's the length. So uh, these things can cut um, you know, six feet or 18 feet long worth of material. Right. That's as opposed to, you know, a silhouette or a cricket where typically, typically you're feeding in like a sheet at a time. Yeah. Like a so 12, you're doing 12, like one shirt like front design and then you're printing another one. And then you're printing another one, you know, where uh, you can set a commercial cutter to print 57 of these things. Yeah. On repeat. Yeah. And it'll so, just spit them right out. And all types of other things to help automate it. Like, um, pause after every one until you hit a button or or eject the paper or the the vinyl material out 2.25 inches so you can slot cut it off yeah. with a razor blade and then start again and right. copy and repeat functions um and then uh and, and anyway tons of more yeah. stuff not worth getting into but, but, but they even at, i think one thing one thing that you wrote down here that even at um you know even at the commercial level you know, you can start doing financing for these. Mm -hmm. So you can start paying by the month. So from a cash basis, you know, they're, they're, they can seem less expensive if you're in business than even buying a cricket. Yeah. You know, because if you're, if you're spending, let's say, I'm just trying to do a little math here. You know, you could spend 60 bucks a month, 80 bucks a month, mm -hmm. you know, and get a complete commercial cutter set up. You know, as a, as opposed to having to write a check for eight hundred bucks for one of the higher end crickets. Yeah, you could cancel Netflix and go to Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts like twice a month less, and, and buy and get one of these. Mark, neither one of those is on the table. <laughs> not not for anybody. There's nobody that would give up Netflix to start a business. That's just not. I just I'm, I'm right in the middle of Reacher. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> okay, well, something out there. There's a subscription okay. you can cancel, but it is affordable, yes. which is great. But That's you what still I still get about the it. newspaper. Do that. <laughs> uh, so so let's talk cons. about some pros and cons. Pros and yeah. cons. Go ahead. I mean, you're the you're the cutter guy. I mean, I know that these things are just really simple to learn. Yeah. Right. The it, the software is simple. You know, one of the reasons that it's simple is because you're. Um, you know, you're not dealing with photos or full color. So you're really just talking about outlines. You know, you're talking about doing mm -hmm. lines. Um, so you don't have to worry about color correction or what color it prints, you know, or anything like that. You're very, you know, it's a, it's a simple design process. Yeah. The, and um, any, any system that exists, period, whether it's, you know, a phone or a, a hammer or, or, or a cutter, right? The, the simpler the system, the easier it is to learn to use, the less likely it is to break. It's just easier in general, right? So yeah. a hammer, uh, you may still have your dad's hammer from like the forties or the fifties or the sixties, and it still works. Right. Yeah. Um, but you probably don't have someone's cell phone from the, from the nineties. If your dad um, was using a hammer in the sixties, that means yeah. you're probably a millennial. You don't know how to use a hammer. You don't, <laughs> you don't know what that's all about. Whatever it might be, okay. whatever it might be, it is, it's a simpler system to do. It's a razor blade. It's a razor blade with a computer. Yeah. So and you, there's you know less what? things to learn. You know what I, I really love about it, though, mm -hmm. is that the, the output is so good. Yeah. You know, like it's really an amazing quality. You know, if you use a good quality heat transfer vinyl and you can tell because if you buy the stuff from Michael's or from, you know, Target or wherever you get it locally, you know, it's pretty thick. So when you put it onto a garment, like it feels like you've got something there, you know, mm -hmm. it feels feels a little crunchy. And um, but, you know, if you use um, a good brand. Um, then it hardly feels like it's there. Yeah, it's really thin. You know, the the adhesive that's on the back is really lightweight. The material is really thin. It's they're made out of uh, polyurethane um, type materials that have a lot of stretch that are that stick to shirts really well, and they're beautiful. Um, so we have like our Triton brand, yeah, which is great for vinyl, which is is just so nice, and and that's a definitely an upgrade when you get into the commercial is being able to use materials like that. But yeah, I'll, I'll also say one mm -hmm. that we didn't mention here, as far as pros go, is there's really almost no limit to how big a design you can do. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, if you're going to do numbers on the back of a shirt, it's a great idea to do that in vinyl. If you wanted to do a design, you know, all the way down a, um, a table runner, and you don't mind putting each piece through your heat press. 
then you can you can print out a single design as long as you want to on vinyl. That's how they do banners in some cases. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so you can do all yeah. that. You can do all that with a commercial uh, cutter as well. Yeah, so that's a great point. I mean, it just points to a lot of this is about versatility and quality. So um, it cutting and cutters in general and using materials, it's just extremely versatile. You there's yep. you can go on almost any shirt, doesn't matter the color, the material. Um, you can also do signs and stickers and wall stickers and um, commercial signs for windows and car decals. They are just extremely versatile. Uh, there's tons of different materials you can buy from metallics to glitter uh, to T-shirt stuff to sticker stuff. Yep. Uh, just the versatility is amazing on a cutter. It's simple to learn. And then topping that all off because of the simplicity um, there's not, there's not much maintenance you have to do. There's yeah. little to no maintenance and you get a great finished good. Uh, so you overall, the, I mean, it's, it's the pros are really are super nice for a cutter. And I I'd say, you know, this is the one device that, um, I don't care which kind of apparel decoration business that you're in or what equipment that you already have. You should probably have a cutter. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Like it is, it is su- such a Swiss army knife. It can fill in in a pinch. It'll do things that some of these some of these other devices won't do. Um, it's up and running constantly. You don't have to do maintenance. Um, you can train somebody to do to use it very quickly. Um, it's just it's you should have one. You know this yeah. is a good. You know this is a good one. You know what's great about it. You just it made me think about it that one of the first tools you can get for for your child maybe when as they get older might be like a little handheld multi tool right because it's got. Yeah pliers on it and a screwdriver and a knife and and some stuff like that. And it's just a great starter tool because it's small. It's not expensive. It's not a big investment and it does a whole bunch of stuff. And if it's a nice quality one, you'll still use it. Yeah. You'll last for, you'll still use it. Even when you have a full toolbox, which I have, I have tons of tools. I use my multi-tool all the time that I've had for like 20 years. Still that's use great. it. And that's what the cutter really is. It's a great multi-tool. It's a not a huge investment. Great output. Um, but there are some cons. Yeah. You might as well bring them up. Yeah. And I, I would say probably the, the and now these are cons that if this is your only, this is the this is the only thing you have to run your business. Mm-hmm. Right. So if this is your business, then probably the biggest con is um everyone that you do a shirt for with heat transfer vinyl, like from a graph tech or a roll and cutter, um, is going to ask you if you can do a picture or more colors. You know, they're, they're, they're always going to ask, Hey, that looks great. Um, can I get, you know, this 17 color logo for my business? You know, can I, can I get that? Or can I get a picture of my kid on this coffee mug? You know, and the answer is going to be no, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's not a full color digital device. Yeah, it's not digital printing, which is great for its simplicity, but you do lose out on a feature that is something a lot of people want. Digital is huge nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is because you're cutting rolled material, you're going to have stacks and piles and boxes of rolled material that you accumulate right. and have to invest in. Yeah. Right. They take up space. If you have a new customer that wants gold and blue and you've never done gold and blue before, you may have to buy two rolls of material that might cost you, you know, 60, 70 bucks or something like that. And um, the order that you're doing may just pay for the material, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Now it's in your inventory and hopefully you can sell that later. But that can be a con of this is that now you've got this color gold and, and it takes up space. You know, I mean, it's, it, they take up some space. These are going to be, it it happens in the Coleman and company warehouse. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We have, we have just like, like tons of space full of all the colors that you might want. Yeah, exactly. So, so that is, that is a downside. Um, And then um, the range, the other downside, which is a little more complicated to say, so hopefully in a simple way, but the range of production speed varies a ton, right? So what I mean by that is, is if you have a small logo, that's one color. And it doesn't, and it's like very simple design, right? McDonald's M. Mm -hmm. You could probably, I mean, you could do a ton of those shirts in an hour, ton. 
fast, easy, one color. Um, the process where you're weeding or like removing out the material you don't want is going to be one simple pull, one simple yep. swipe, right? Because there's it's easy. Um, now, if you want to comparatively do something a much more complicated logo, um, with that's maybe four colors and it's got lots of lettering in it, you know, maybe just like a home improvement, you know, type of uh, type of company, then uh, you might find that producing that same logo might not be four times slower. It could be 10 times slower. Right. Because you've got to weed out the windows on the house, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. You've got to do And it's that. four colors. So you're cutting yeah. four different colors and you're lining up the four different colors once they're all cut out and done. So the, the scale of the speed can be faster than any other technology or significantly slower than any other technology. Right. Um, so that's a little bit of a con because you do have to understand managing that and understanding that. It's a little bit of a complex con, but it's really important, I think, compared to other, to other types of printing where it doesn't matter what you do, it's pretty much all the same speed. Yep. There you go. Okay, I think that's good. Great. I think we, we've got a good idea of heat transfer vinyl. The price, you know, you're going to start around 2,400 bucks. You can get just the cutter for much less, but you're going to need more than just that. Mm -hmm. So, yes, and everything you need more than just that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully that that's uh, something we don't have to say. But but with everything in life, you always got to buy an accessory for it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and, and, and sometimes and, you need them. And and it's funny. Like I I love the chats we get on Cold Essie because. If you are, you know, if you're on in Facebook and you see an ad for digital heat effects, um, then, you know, and we're going to talk about white toner printing soon. You know that if somebody says, how much is that printer? You know that you have four printer choices. Yeah. Right. And each one of those four printers has three bundles, a good, better, best bundle each. So that's mm -hmm. 12 different decisions to make. And there are, of course, you know, options within that if you want to do hats and things like that. Um, when you go to uh, the Cold Essie Facebook page and you say, how much is that printer? Um, then you get all of the digital heat effects and DTG, the four UV printers, um, the DTF printer. I mean, it's just like it's, it's compounded. So um, the, the answer to, to what that price is that we're going to talk about through here and the questions that we get about how much something is, is going, I'm, I'm just... I'm reminded about how excited I am to get this out because now I'm just going to send a link to the podcast. <laughs> no, that's great. And, um, and before we're going to do sublimation next, but before we do it, just, you reminded me of something that just should, should be said out loud, right? Mm -hmm. Because every once in a while we'll get somebody just today, actually, I was asked to update a product page because somebody, um, some people had thought that it was unfair to just show the price of the printer when they need more things. Yes. And that's a rock and a hard place thing because people want to know how much the printer cost. Yeah. Because that's an essential question. What does this one device cost? But you need other things. Yeah. And I mean, this is, I mean, I, I don't guess if you go and buy a digital camera, you need a memory card, you need a case, you probably need a tripod, you might need additional lenses. Like it's not, it's not uncommon in our world that when you buy something, you might, and your iPhone doesn't even come with a power plug anymore. <laughs> right. So you Good can't point. even charge it. You literally yeah. can't charge an iPhone that you <laughs> But you buy. can buy the phone for that price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's just kind of, a, it's a bit of a nature of the world, but, but devices, a lot of things are sold independently now. So we try to, we have a printer and a price for all of this stuff, but everything we recommend a bundle or a package. Yeah, that includes multiple things. So having said that out loud, let's talk about sublimation. Yeah, let's do that because it's really inexpensive. Great. We love and that. you get to do full color. Well, we love that, too. So we're yeah, already we're getting into pros. Let's start. I know. off. Well, with... I mean, <laughs> so first of all, we'll start with um, that. A cold essay. We have the Sawgrass brand printers. Um, which currently are the SG500 and the SG1000. It's just a size difference in how big they are. Um, they both do similar things. And these, the price range for um, sublimation packages, we're going to say for like 600 if you just buy a printer, 
up to like 6,000 if you buy the biggest one they have and then a bunch of prices in between of packages. Yeah, and and the other thing I'll say is we we chose the Sawgrass brand for a reason, just like with Roland and um, GraphTech. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the reasons we cho chose Sawgrass is because they've got very good training that the manufacturer does, which is great. And unlike a lot of other manufacturers, you know, um, Sawgrass is is putting this product and the ink and everything together into one package. You know, they're not selling you an Epson printer and then you go and source the sublimation ink and then you, you know, you, you're not doing your own work to make this printer work. Mm -hmm. So it's a great deal. It's a nice little package and it does a ton for anywhere between six hundred and six thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, and it's a purpose-built system, so the whole thing is designed just for sublimation, and um, they've got a great reputation, and um, and we could probably attest to it, attest to that ourselves because a ton of customers out there are using sawgrass printers and love them. So yeah. it's a yeah. great product. Um, some of the pros of uh, of the sawgrass sublimation printers, I would say they're also relatively easy to learn. Okay. Yeah, it's relatively easy to learn. Um, you're just printing with uh, CMYK. So it's essentially the same as any home printer you've ever used in how you print. So, so, so let, me, let me interrupt you here because I want to differentiate between saying that the, the cutter software is easy to learn. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to learn to use um, the Sawgrass systems. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, there's some fundamental complexities in Sawgrass because now you're dealing with full color. Mm -hmm. So um, it's definitely going to be more complicated than using a cutter because you've got different colors. You're going to take a picture with your phone. You're going to put it on the computer. It may not look the same. You know, you're going to want to remove things out of the picture. Your customers are going to want to do this. So it's a great product. The software is easy to use compared to a lot of other full color printers. Um, it's just different than, than using a cutter. Yeah. And, and you bring up a good point and it's, um, it's an answer that can be mildly complicated, uh, but it's important to understand, right? So if somebody sends you, um, the McDonald's logo, because you get McDonald's as a client. How wonderful is that? That's the only way, by the way, you should be printing the McDonald's. <laughs> yes, logo. but but it's a it's an M, right? Mm -hmm. um, to print that in the Sawgrass or in the Graph Tech is probably going to be the same amount of work, relatively. There's some things you have to learn. Just saying mm -hmm. that you don't yep. know how to do it now. Listening to it, if you haven't used these, you have to learn okay. things. But Fair. relatively easy to use. If somebody sends you um, a picture of their dog. And they say, can you print exactly this? The sawgrass is probably going to be pretty easy to do because you can probably you can bring it in and print it and you'll get a print and you can print exactly what they gave you. If you wanted yeah. to cut out an image of the dog, like um, Hannah did a great video where she converted a picture of her dog into a cuttable kind of 2D shape. That's hard to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So so there's a little bit of a give and take back and forth here on on the ease of use, a little bit of a, a depends. But to your point, you are doing full colors now. So there's yep. there's another degree of complexity that happens because when you print that image of the dog and then you put it on a shirt, it might not come out the way the customer was hoping it would. Because yeah, you might end up with a picture phone. of a you might end up with a picture of a beige retriever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Or, or just the, 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 um, there was a flash and, and part of, and there's a hot spot of a flash that shows up. So part of the dog's, you know, face looks empty or missing. Right. So the, so then that means you're learning graphics a little bit, you're learning how to yeah. edit photos. So there's a little bit of complexity there. Um, and a little bit of it depends, but I would still say relatively easy, um, to learn and use. Yeah, and uh, and also brings up a good point. Um, when you buy a printing device from um, Cold SE, we we typically provide you training on how to use it, and it's normally very good. Um, we do not provide you training on how to create the graphics. You know, so mm -hmm. you know, that part, you none of these devices come with um, every picture you would want to print built into the printer. 
you do have to arrange to get graphics done. You have to do it yourself or you have to get it from your customer. The sawgrass um, and sublimation printing is, is pretty forgiving and it's very simple to use, um, but it will not do a design on your behalf. None of these things will. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You, everything's got a learning curve, but the, um, the pros of sublimation are, are really just, they're beautiful. You get a great finished product. I Man, think that it, that's it kind is, of just wraps it up. Yeah. And, and you can't like, you can't, you can't understate that. You can yeah. get a beautiful print yeah. from sublimation. You get, just get an amazing finished product and it becomes, you know, like a part of it literally. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the nature of sublimation is you're physically changing the properties of whatever you're making, like a t-shirt, you've now physically changed the shirt. You didn't glue something on top of it or stick something on top, like with vinyl, you've actually changed the shirt and uh, it's going to feel good. It's going to wash good. And the same is true from mugs and, and all these other things. Yep. Yeah. It's real. And that is, you know, the versatility is one of the pluses because a lot of promotional products that you might buy, or you might steal off somebody's table at a trade show, you yeah, know, the the, the keychain, the the coffee mug, you know, things like that. They're frequently done with sublimation, um, and uh, and they hold up great. And so you can not only you're already not only in the custom T-shirt business. If you're willing to spend the money on an alternative heat press, you could be in the custom hat business and the custom mug business, and you know all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. But it, and I love this stuff. It's great technology, great value. Um, there are some cons to it too. These are so, these are these are almost these are bummers. They're not bummers. just they're not, these are <laughs> it's a it's a bummer. It's yeah, it's, it's a, a bummer. bummer that you can only print on you know light colored items, like on whites. Mm-hmm. You know, like on the shirt that I'm wearing here, this this dark gray, you know, um, you're never gonna use sublimation on it. No, no. And, and this is a light green that I'm wearing. If I wanted to do a black logo on here, I could probably sublimate this. Mm. Um, but that's just about it. I'm not going to get any colors on this. I'm not going to be able to do any reds or yellows or light blues or purples, anything like that. The green is going to change it. So it's pretty limited on, on uh, but you can do some light colors. Um, but really you're lim- going to be limited to light colors and then polyester or sublimation coated items. So the item has to be available to sublimate, um, right. which is not a cotton t-shirt and it's not um, a piece of wood that you purchased from the craft store. Right. Right. Yeah. It has and to be a I, special item. And the, the polyester really, the, the more it is like hundred percent polyester, the better it's going to look um, and the better it's going to be react. And just like, um, you know, and the darker a shirt gets, the, the sublimation doesn't have white ink. So mm-hmm. whatever you put it on, whatever you put that sublimation transfer on, the color of the item you're pressing it to impacts the color of the design. So if you, you know, if you have a beautiful, like let's say you're going to do an American flag print and you, you're going to do that. If you did it on a, a bright white, 100% polyester shirt, um, it's going to look amazing. It's really going to yeah, pop. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. If you do it on a tri blend light colored shirt, um, it'll probably be muted. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll probably be pretty muted. If you did it on a black cotton shirt, it's going to look terrible. Invisible, yeah. <laughs> relatively invisible. Um, and then um, speaking of just you know printing and inks and stuff like yeah. that, we're now into a liquid based system, right? So we have liquid inks. And if you've owned a printer before, you know that um, printers just require a little bit of TLC. Um, So you got to keep it clean. You want to keep it on and plugged in so it can do some self-cleaning. If you don't use it in a long time, you may need to do cleaning cycles, which uses ink and and things like that. And um, you do now have cartridges to replace. So with the cutter, you are just replacing a blade that lasts pretty darn long. Mm -hmm. Um, with this, you're going to be running out of ink and colors and you want to make sure that you have ink in stock. Um, and, and that's a bit of a pro too, because you need four colors of ink to do all your colors. Right. So your inventory is doing one color at a time. Right. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, but there is a little bit of maintenance to be had now you're getting into a little more complicated. And I think it's good good that you pointed Mm -hmm. out that anytime you have liquid ink, it's very much kind of like running, you know, running an engine on your lawnmower or snowblower or, or, or anything, you know, requires pretty regular maintenance. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it requires you to take care of it or, you know, it gets sludgy. You know, I think that's the technical term that supports you <laughs> if you don't, you know, if you don't yeah. maintain sludgy, sludginess, um, yeah. you know, you've got to, you got to take care of it where yeah. with the cutter, it's not, that's not true. Yeah. A cutter, you just, you put in a, you just stick it under your desk and you don't use it in forever. And then you turn it back on one day and use it. And if you did that with a printer, you'd, you'd, you'd ruin it. With a, with a, an ink or an inkjet printer. An ink, ink or an inkjet printer, a liquid ink system. Yep. So, so speaking of liquid ink systems, let's move speaking on to the next one. Yes. Um, which is a, a, a hybrid of printing and cutting. So uh, print and cut, cut systems. Um, and we have the Roland brand, which is just considered to be the, you know, the best out there. Uh, a lot of people agree the BN20 and the newer BN20A. Uh, and this is a system that is like your cutter that we mentioned earlier, but it's got a printer built into it as well. So you can print onto a material and then that will uh, go back into the machine and cut your print and your shape out where you can make t-shirts or stickers or anything you like in whatever shape you want it to. Yep. Yeah. And that, that's a great description. I mean, imagine your, your cricket, if it could mm-hmm. hold a 20 inch roll of vinyl and had a, had a professional ink, inkjet printer bolted to the side, right? It's Cause what it yep. does is it actually prints, you know, it'll take that picture, <clears throat> excuse me, of the beige retriever that you were printing out on the, um, uh, the sublimation on the sublimation mm-hmm. printer. Yeah. And uh, it's going to print that out on, onto a white vinyl. So you're using the white vinyl as a substitute for white, for white ink. And it's cutting that design out like a cutter does. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. end up with something that is incredibly versatile. That looks fantastic. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with the look on one of these Roland BN20 systems. It's a beautiful system. And uh, the, the cost of this system is about six to $8,000 ish. Mm-hmm. Um, about $165 a month financed and give yeah. or take, you might need, you may or may not need a heat press depending on what you're going to do with the printer, or you may already own one. You could um, have terrible whatever. credit and they just, it'll be $500 or something. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of factors. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of factors, but there is financing available and it's about six to $8,000. It's a very popular system. Tons of people have it. And, and the reason they do is because of these pros. Um, yeah. We've got um, a full digital printing capability. So um, hundreds of thousands of colors or whatever it might be. You can, you can print full pictures. Yep. Um, it's really versatile. So you can go, you can print a picture of a dog on a t-shirt, then a picture of a dog for a sticker for a wall and then for a window cling and then for a car decal. And um, so you can go from signs to banners, to t-shirts, you know, to stickers to put on a laptop, you know, yeah. it's a beautifully vers- versatile machine. It, do- it does a lot. Yeah, it does a lot. And, and it does everything your cutter mentioned before will do. So you can buy the metallic gold material that your customer wanted, and you can just cut it out just like you could with your cutter and not print anything on it. So okay. it's, it's still a cutter too, which is great. Okay. So uh, it's a bit of a two in one, you know, almost a uh, type of machine. And, um, and it's a, this is a 20 inch wide, the BN20, right? 20A. Uh, so you can print 20 inches wide and then just a huge long roll, like you mentioned earlier in cutting. I mean, the size especially if you piece things together, you, you can go huge with this stuff. Yeah. And I'd say that the, a lot of our, or not a lot, many customers that have the, uh, the BN20 just use it for banners. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they're, they're actually printing banners for different things, or, you know, there's some that just are in the window clean business, you know, um, wine bottle labels. There's, there's, there's tons of applications for it. Yeah. So it's a great for, making packages for, for a company. We did a brewery video, kind of a mock brewery. And we did um, stickers that went on glasses and stickers to hand out to customers and a sign for the door and a window cling and t-shirts and aprons. You know, you could do a lot of stuff with this one printer um, and it, it does beautifully and it's versatile, right? Light, light colors, dark colors, cotton, polyester, just like the vinyl. Yeah. So if, you know, if your question is, why should I get a BN20 instead of one of the Sawgrass sublimation printers? 
you know, then it's, well, I can print out beautiful color images and I can pretty much put them on whatever I want to, mm -hmm. you know, without restriction to material. Um, why would I get it versus one of the Roland or Graphtech cutters? It's so I can do full color mm -hmm. and it's a bigger and it's a bigger cutter. Yep. No, it's not just one color at a time. It's as many colors you want as one at once. And I know we're going to get to the cons, but I just want to point out here that this is where the um, the financing payments start to strike me a little bit, you know, because, you know, we're talking about 165 bucks, you know, or mm -hmm. so for the, for the Roland. And it was how much, like $65 for the graph tech, mm -hmm. you know, something along those lines. So really you're talking about a hundred dollars a month. The difference between something, you know, that will, that is bigger and will give you full color and the ability to do a lot more things. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it starts to get striking. So as you're, if you're out there and you're thinking about um, messaging us or calling Coldesi and saying, how much is the printer? You know, you should probably add how much is it a month? Mm -hmm. Because that's a, that's an important calculation too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's between, if you're going to start a business and you're going to get a website and pay your fees to the state and, and, you know, all these other little fees you're going to pay to start a business. You're you'll spend more than you would on a, a monthly payment on one of these things. Yeah. It's not that expensive. So, um, and this is the asset of your business. This is the core of what makes you a business or, or yeah. these things. So the, it's really fantastic. You could do it for such an affordable price because, Almost anybody can figure out a way to to afford 150 bucks a month. Right, it's not a large amount of money to get approved for or to be able to figure out how to get started if you're trying to start on you know on a shoestring budget. Yeah, that's um, true. So some of the cons though mentioned, um, we were talking about printing again and liquid inks. So um, naturally, there's just the maintenance. That goes along with that. There's a little bit of work to keeping it up. Um, you can, you have to take care of it. Um, and you do have ink and rolled materials. So it does, there's some investment in supplies. It's yeah. going to cost you more to produce a t-shirt with a, with a BN20 than it would with a sawgrass sublimation printer. Yep. The materials are a little more expensive. You're going to use more ink. You get and a product that can do more. Right. But, it but also you. you're 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 also investing more in supplies in general because you're going to you're going to store bigger rolls of vinyl, mm -hmm. and you're going to those those rolls of vinyl are more expensive than if you were just buying white vinyl for the graph tech, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're going to invest more there, and you know you're going to have that roll of vinyl sitting there, you know, in, un, until you use it. So that's just money that's tied up, and it's going to cost more to ship. You know, um, so there, there are attendant costs and I will say something about maintenance is that once you get to the Roland, um, BN20 or BN20A level, the maintenance is serious now. Not that it's seriously hard. The consequences of not doing it is now in the thousands of dollars, you know, or at least in the high hundreds, because you'll damage electronic pieces inside the printer if you do not maintain it properly. You're not talking about replacing a six or seven hundred dollar sawgrass printer. You're talking about a you know part of a six thousand, eight thousand, ten thousand dollar system. Mm -hmm. Yep, it just it's means cool. maintenance becomes even that much more important. Yep, and uh, like not hard but important. Yep, right. And um, so so overall though, um, the Roland print print and cut is just. It's just a fantastically popular piece of equipment that does so much, creates a beautiful output. And um, just like anything, there's some cons to it, but it's yep. great. It's great. So I, and I don't, I don't want to gloss over the other cons. Let's make sure that we point those out before mm -hmm. we, we move on. And that is, um, it's slow. You know, when you, when you look at other ways, if you were just in the custom t-shirt business, and you are judging your success on how many t-shirts you could print an hour. Um, this isn't it. You know, this is, this is the idea that, yeah, you can do, you can do t-shirts. Um, but you can also do 57 other things, you know, and you've got size advantages that other pieces of equipment don't have. 
You can do window clings, which is hard to do with any of the other pieces of equipment. You know, it's not it's not a not the fastest printer on the market. Yeah, yeah, and 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 part of that is because you're printing large things like a t-shirt logo and cutting it too. Yep. So you're printing it and cutting it. If you were just cutting a t-shirt like in uh, like with the graph tech, that's obviously faster because there's a whole printing step you're you're skipping, right? Yeah. Um and even with your sublimation, you don't have to cut anything out with sublimation. So you just print and you don't have to do the cutting after. You do have to cut out the material on the Roland. So there is there are critical steps. Um everything has a um an economy of cost and benefits. So mm -hmm. the quality and the versatility on the print and cut system by Roland is just amazing. The cost is it's a little more expensive and slower to be able to create that. Yep. And it also requires because of the setup uh, when you when you combine those two things, the printing and the um, and the cutting takes a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more. Um, training, you know, going from Corel Draw and Illustrator, which are the recommended softwares mm -hmm. to use it, you know, you got to get those. And then, you know, you've got to be able to set up the prints and the cuts, which is different than any of these other technologies really that we're talking about. Yeah. It's not just automatic that you give it a picture of a dog and it knows to cut it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. The computers are just, are not that smart yet. <laughs> they don't yep. know what you, what you want and, and they can't just say, you know, cut out a dog for me and it will figure it out. You've got to be able to know how to do it. And then also just understand some basics of graphic design and when you would want to cut things out and how to, how to separate parts of an image from another. I mean, there are some complexities. Um, again, not that hard to learn, but you've got to have the software to do it, graphic software, and you have to spend some time to learn how to do it. Yeah, you got to um, learn it. You got to learn it. It's not automatic. We're, we're, I mean, from the beginning of this podcast, we were never in the automatic. <laughs> um, but nothing is automatic. But this is going to be more than the sawgrass, I would say, in the yeah. knowledge needed. And, um, and, and, and by the way, you'll, you'll <clears throat> notice like when we do our demonstrations of any of this, this equipment, we're, except for maybe on the graph tech, we're rarely actually creating the designs. We're mostly printing or cutting or producing the designs, showing you the equipment and application to the shirt or the material or, or whatever it is, you know, and that's because, you know, we're not in the Corel draw business, you know, we're, we're in the equipment and end result business. Um, so we, if we want a design done, we send it to cold SE graphics. You know, we give the idea of the picture say, hey, get this ready for a, for a Roland print and cut or for sublimation or for white toner or DTG or something like that. So we handle the graphics. We're not showing you the graphics. We're showing you the application, you know, as easy as we can get it. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're in the business of equipment, not in graphics. I think that's the perfect way to say it, or at least not in training people how to use graphics and in um selling graphics software right we sell equipment and the and the software to run the equipment um we have graphic designer on our marketing team who helps us produce things i don't mm -hmm. i don't know how to do it um however i've learned over the years how to do um some basic stuff myself so i can do some some of the simpler things some of the more complicated things i have to send out to get done and you're going to have to make those decisions for your business are you going to be a graphics expert and learn how to do all this? Are you going to be able to do maybe 25% of it and pay somebody to do the other part? I mean, there's there's plenty um, to be discussed there. I, I, I feel like we should have called this podcast episode Real Talk About T-Shirt Printers. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we're going to talk about printers, let's move on <clears throat> to the next one. Let's please. The white okay. toner transfer printer. Yeah. So um, we carry the uh, digital heat effects systems is what we have. And, and we call it the system because it's, it's generally made up of a Uninet or a Creo printer. But as we already said, the printer is not everything. So we have a whole episode talking about this stuff. Right. And so, by the way, before it was called Creo, those, those were called Oki printers. Oki printers. Right. Just the new, just the new, new USA branding of of what they want to call that that brand and that company. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, white, white toner printers are, it's a very descriptive term, Mm -hmm. right? The difference between um, your, a color laser printer or color copier is normally they print um, a combination of CMYK, which is cyan, yellow, magenta, and black to make a beautiful array of colors. Um, If you just use those, you're pretty much in the same situation as sublimation, Mm -hmm. right? Because they don't use white ink you can't apply it to a dark substrate. Um, white toner, um, most of the time substitutes the black toner for white. So you put that white in there and now it lays down a white toner layer and then prints the color on top. So that that's kind of the fundamentals of what we're talking about when we talk about white toner. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a reasonably newer technology compared to everything else we've discussed. Right. Uh, but they have been around for a while to have um, tons of these printers out in the market um, all over the world. So it's, a, it's it, a proven it, it is the most popular. It's Coldesky's most popular technology. Yeah, it's one of the most popular technologies worldwide in growth, for sure. Yep. Uh, the cost of a system like this um, is going to be about we said about thirty seven hundred dollars to about fifteen thousand um, dollars or somewhere around one hundred to four hundred a month. Um, which, which is the most broadly. infuriating answer that we give. Yeah, it is. It really is. But it, how much it, is a digital heat effect system? Yeah, I don't know. It's between Massive. four thousand and fifteen thousand. Yeah, and and there's a lot of products that are like that, right? And and we don't even. I mean, your fo- a phone nowadays. How much does it cost to buy a phone? I don't know, free or like three grand. Yeah, you know exactly. I, you know Somewhere how much is three. how much is a car? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, 500 to 5 million, you know, yeah. so this is just one of those. There's a lot of options, a lot of choices. This is why you want to talk to one of the experts to find out what you need. And we have a whole episode on it. So I think what I would say is we can go a little light on the description and quick on the pros and cons and recommend listening to the whole episode because there's a lot. of. I, I agree. I do want to bracket the prices in the middle, though, and say most people spend between about eight and 12,000. OK, great. Great. I think that's good. That's good. So um, the pros. The pros. White printer printer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're full color printing. So that's great. Just like we talked about the rolling and the sublimation, um, except it's toner. So it's fast. Yeah. Super fast to print, like, like significantly faster than anything else. Um, and it looks, I mean, I gotta, I gotta stop it. It looks great. Like yeah. it, it is a great looking if you want, if you wrote down everything that you would want in a t-shirt transfer printer, then white toner would, would click the boxes. Yeah. It checks a lot of boxes. Um, we're, and there, it's not a liquid system. It's a yeah. toner system. So that brings the maintenance like way, way, way down. To- toner is a powder, by the way. Yeah. Toner is a powder. So it's a powder. It's like ground up plastic almost. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's a pow- it's a super fine powder, and that just means that there's no liquid, which means there's significantly less maintenance. You know, you can just turn the printer off and let it sit there for a while, and turn it back on and, and print a hundred shirts, and then turn it off again. Um, I've, got, I've got a brother laser printer here next to me that I yeah. use um, twice a year. Okay. <laughs> And all I do is turn it on and it prints. And that's because it's a toner printer. Yeah, it's because it's a toner printer. So you don't have to worry about print head clogs and lines and banding and all that stuff is generally just not the same issue with liquid. Um, and you've got the versatility like you did with the Roland. So you can do lights and darks and cotton and polyester. Um, it's just extremely versatile in what you can do. You can do hard goods as well. Right. Yeah, like, so like coasters and um, wood plaques. glass. Yeah. yeah. So it's really versatile there and uh, benefit over the sublimation. And one of the pros is it doesn't require any special coatings. Okay. So you literally can go to a craft store or your wood shop and cut out a, a shape of the, of a baseball and put yeah. a kid kid's name on it and you don't need any special coating or prep you could just do it straight up on a piece of wood or on a piece of glass yeah so um, so cool. so let's say that let, let's say that again you can go if you wanted to take a sawgrass and you wanted to make uh, coffee mugs let's say for example then you would need to get sublimation 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 ready or sublimatable coffee mm-hmm. mugs i just didn't know how to say that okay <laughs> uh, because they because what they do is they kind of they bond the ceramic in the coffee mug with a um, 
a polyester base that makes the sublimation work with it like a polyester t-shirt. Um, but if you went and got a mug from Walmart that wasn't specifically poly, even if it was white, then the sublimation wouldn't, it wouldn't take, wouldn't look good, would wash right off, would be a disaster. Yeah. And, um, and on the digital heat effects, you don't need any special coding. No, yeah. um, no, I mean, there's just, there's going to be limitations and, and there's not time to go into all that. But generally speaking, um, if the material can be heated up because you heat apply, if the material can be heated up and, and you can get it in a heat press, you can just about put uh, a digital heat effects transfer onto it, which yep. is very cool. And there's different papers and stuff like that. And there's a whole episode on this. If I didn't mention that a couple of times, did you? I recommend okay. it. I Should recommend we link it. to that in the notes or something like that. Um, I don't know how to do links on the internet. I okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'll be in the notes. Um, so um, there are some cons. We should talk about that. Just like every system, absolutely. There, there is an economy of pros and cons that make things. Um, this we are now, I believe, I would say, it's taking a next level up in the learning pro process. There are steps. Fair. It's a little more fine tuned. I'll be honest with heat transfer vinyl. If you have a heat press and you accidentally set it to a temperature and put a T-shirt on it and just close it, you will probably have a finished shirt, right? right. You can accidentally get it on. The, the range of of, uh, of the way it will work is very, very large range. Tolerant. It's very the tolerant. tolerance. It's very, very tolerant. As you get to toner, that tolerance level shrinks down a bit more. Um, and it, so it does require a little more precision. Not hard, but accurate. Not challenging, but accuracy is important. Right. So, so not just in the process, you know, in the mm -hmm. physical process of, you know, peeling it and putting it on the heat press and how you apply it to the shirt and things like that, but also um, in the, in the environment as well, because part of the learning process is really, is realizing that it's going to, you know, everything is going to change a little bit if you're in a really humid or really dry environment. So there are some adjustments that you make, even after you've gone through training, you know, it takes practice. And it's a skill that you develop. Yep. The payoff is, is worth it. And the people that do a good job with digital heat effects, I mean, honestly, are just making tons of money. I'm not even gonna, yeah. not making that up. Yeah, it's great. And, and I had a conversation with one of our trainers um, who's up in New Jersey. And mm -hmm. he was talking about um, that it was really freezing cold in the office when he got in there first thing in the morning. And he had to raise his heat press up 10 degrees to do the transfers right. just because it was that cold in the room, it was cooling down everything. So, I mean, this is something that, uh, the, the, like you said, the tolerance is something that is a little tighter. So that's a con, um, not hard, but accurate is important. Um, yeah. the toner and transfer paper. Um, also it's not as soft as other ways of printing shirts, especially when you compare it to DTG sublimation or direct to film which we'll get into right. those next. Yeah, it um, is. It's more, it is more in keeping with putting the, um, the Roland, you know, pu putting yeah. a print and cut transfer onto a t-shirt. Yeah. It's closer to that. Um, and vinyl is dependent. Vinyl's all a little bit all over the place because there's so many materials, but so, so why, um, why is that? What makes it less soft? So, um, so for one, the liquid ink, liquid inks in general will produce a softer transfer on a shirt. Okay. Right. The liquid generally when it's finished, um, <clears throat> it's almost like rubber in a way. If okay. you take like some, some, uh, DTG ink that's been coagulated, like in a bottle, like, um, that's old, you know, if you pull out, like I felt that stuff, it feels like a little okay. rubber ball. It gets rubbery. Okay. Um, and so the ink kind of dries like that toner, um, and the polymers are that on that are going to dry a little more, um, like a little more closer to paper than rubber. Okay. So they're not as flexible. They're, um, you, they're not going to stretch as much. Right. Mm -hmm. The stretch and return is not as much. There's some there to a degree, um, but not nearly as much as say like a DTF or, or sublimation for, yeah, for now, now let's, let's kind of, um, 
let's spef specify here that you can do designs with white toner printing that can be incredibly soft. Yes. Right. You, you can, yeah. I mean, the right design with plenty of white space, you know, doing logos and things like that. Um, it'll feel great. And I've got, and I know you do too. Yeah. I've got white toner transfer printed shirts that I've had for years. Oh yeah. They, they feel terrific. Absolutely. And I think it just goes to the level one on the con or the first yeah. thing we mentioned the cons is the precision in the learning. So yeah. if you, if you've taken the time to learn how to do it and learn the graphics and you build together a shirt that makes sense with the graphic and the process of making it, your finished good is amazing. If you do it wrong or you skip steps or you don't know how to edit your graphic in a good way, then you could get a finished product that's not as soft as say, if you were to have done it in sublimation. So I think that's a learning curve thing where in sublimation, you could take a picture of a dog, send it to your printer, put it on a shirt and it will feel great. Right. It might not look perfect yet because you didn't do any graphic arts, but it will feel amazing. If you did yeah. that with the digital heat effects, it's, it's going to feel like you have a transfer on a shirt. If yeah. you did that with the roll in the same thing. And um, so, so I, I, mm -hmm. I think this is the, you know, this is one of those trade-offs where we say, you know, it's no perfect. There's no perfect printer. It's just what's best for your business. Um, I think white toner transfer printers are very close to being perfect. Um, but, you know, you are trading the ability to take a transfer and put it on virtually any fabric and virtually any color. Um, you're trading the ability to do that with the, you know, the maybe the, the permanence and the softness of a sublimation print. Mm -hmm. Right, because you you won't get it that way with the Roland, and you won't get it that way with white transfer. But you're trading that versatility of color and material for those other factors. Yeah. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to um, what turned out to be uh, part one of two podcasts uh, on um, you know the 2022 price survey, price and feature survey of what the best t-shirt printers are in the market. Yeah, so um, all this information will be continued with the other half of the list um, in a part two episode. Uh, we just broke this up just to make it a little bit more digestible so you didn't have to have um, an hour and a half to two hour long episode about this, but it's all great information and uh, stay tuned for the next episode to wrap it up. Yeah, if you want to just let this one roll into the next one. There you go, perfect. <laughs> <laughs>